October 30, 2025. NASA's live stream tracking interstellar visitor, 3I Atlas, abruptly freezes mid signal, just as the object approaches the Sun. Within seconds, radio telescopes register a one minute pulse from the same coordinates, a pattern unlike any natural echo or known transmission. NASA blames a technical glitch, then retracts their statement. What followed was unlike any routine data loss. Researchers left with more questions and hints of evidence no agency will fully explain. What really happened when 3i slash Atlas vanished? And why did the signal that returned upend every expectation? Amateur astronomers across continents kept their own records as 3i slash Atlas neared the Sun, archiving both NASA's official live stream and parallel feeds from independent observatories. In the hours following the event, these enthusiasts began comparing the raw footage, searching for evidence of the widely reported blackout. The most cited anomaly, a 30-second freeze, appeared not on NASA's main channel, but on a handful of amateur YouTube streams. On the popular Voyager channel, the screen locked at 11.47 and 12 seconds UTC, overlay data frozen in place, then dissolved to a generic error message. User chat logs captured the confusion, with some viewers reporting a sudden silence, while others saw the feed continue without interruption. When the archived videos were reviewed, the freeze was confirmed in the Voyager stream, but not in the main NASA TV archive or in feeds aggregated by Skylive.tv. NASA's own public replay, posted later that day, showed continuous coverage through the perihelion window with no unexplained gaps. Data from the European Space Agency's delayed uploads revealed only routine scheduling pauses, unrelated to the moment in question. Other amateur streams, when checked against their original time-stamped files, displayed only minor buffering or local connection drops, common during high-traffic events. No central log or technical report has synchronized these incidents across platforms. Attempts to access original server logs or CDN records from YouTube and NASA TV have so far failed. These files remain outside public reach. NASA's brief statement, issued just after the event, attributed any interruption to a technical transmission error, but the statement was removed within hours. No official incident report or maintenance log has since been released, and requests for internal documentation are still pending. In the absence of forensic, time-synchronized evidence, the blackout remains a patchwork of conflicting reports. Some amateur astronomers maintain the freeze was global, while others point to isolated glitches amplified by the scale of public attention. The only verifiable time-bound outage appears in a single amateur stream, not in the official archives or across major observatory feeds. With no hard data confirming a coordinated blackout, the question lingers. Was this a case of deliberate interruption or a technical hiccup magnified by coincidence? The reliability of what millions saw or thought they saw remains in doubt, leaving the visual record of 3i slash Atlas's closest approach unresolved and open to interpretation. At 11.48 UTC, as the visual feed struggled to stabilize, a separate anomaly unfolded beyond the reach of optical telescopes. Global radio observatories, including LOFAR in Europe and CHIME in Canada, were already monitoring the sky for transient events. Within seconds of the disputed blackout, analysts at several independent facilities logged an unexpected radio pulse, brief, repeating, and centered on the coordinates where 3i slash Atlas was last observed. The signal persisted just over a minute, repeating at regular intervals before fading below detection thresholds. The pulse's structure drew immediate attention. Unlike the erratic bursts typical of solar noise or cosmic ray interference, this event showed a pattern, a binary-like spacing, with each segment separated by a consistent interval. Frequency analysis revealed a subtle drift, not characteristic of known spacecraft telemetry or natural radio sources. No active probe or satellite was scheduled to transmit from that region, and the modulation failed to match any standard beacon or navigational signal used by space agencies. Amateur radio astronomers, using open-source receivers, uploaded their own logs to public forums. Their timestamps, while not perfectly synchronized, fell within a narrow window, 
suggesting a single, coherent event rather than random noise. Some specialists pointed out that the pulse's profile bore a passing resemblance to certain telemetry echoes, but the frequency shifts appeared intentional, not the result of Doppler effects or atmospheric distortion. Others cautioned that without raw, high-resolution data, such comparisons remained speculative. NASA's only public comment on the radio anomaly came in a terse update, labeling it unconfirmed interference. The wording left room for interpretation. Within hours, references to the event vanished from agency websites and partner observatory bulletins. No official spectrograms, filter bank files, or raw time series data were released for external review. In the absence of primary datasets, most of the technical analysis relied on screenshots, amateur logs, and secondhand summaries, none of which met the standards for reproducible scientific evidence. Independent analysts continued to debate the pulse's origin. Some argued for an unusual solar reflection, possibly scattered by charged particles near the sun. Others suggested the possibility of a structured, non-terrestrial emission, though no consensus formed. What was clear, the radio event did not fit the signature of any known natural or artificial source routinely observed in that sector of the sky. In the days that followed, requests for access to observatory archives went unanswered, and several data repositories quietly restricted public downloads. The measurable, time-bound nature of the pulse left a record, fragmented, incomplete, and now largely inaccessible. For many, this unexplained signal deepened the uncertainty around 3UI slash Atlas, shifting the focus from what could be seen to what might have been heard. Within hours of the radio anomaly, access to NASA's raw telescope feeds and partner observatory data portals tightened abruptly. Public interfaces that had streamed near real-time imagery and telemetry began displaying a uniform message, offline for maintenance. The sudden restriction came under the agency's internal data protection notice, a protocol more commonly associated with planetary protection, biological contamination, or defense-related incidents. For those familiar with NASA's operational history, this level of lockdown is rare during open, high-profile events. The mechanics of the data protection notice are precise. Once triggered, it automatically revokes public and many internal credentials, freezing live access and archiving current data for review. According to historians of science, such measures echo past moments of uncertainty, like the Galileo probe's antenna failure in 1993 or the abrupt silence following the Mars observer's loss that same year. In those cases, communications blackouts were justified by technical crisis or national security, not by ambiguous scientific data. The 3 i Atlas event, in contrast, was unfolding under the gaze of a global audience, with no declared emergency or clear technical breakdown. NASA's public explanation referenced a system synchronization update, a phrase that, while technically plausible, offered little clarity. The timing, directly after the disputed signal and data confusion, stood out to professionals and amateurs alike. Multiple research repositories, including those managed by partner agencies and independent university observatories, shifted to restricted mode within the same window. For many in the astronomy community, the speed and coordination of these actions suggested either a highly sensitive anomaly or a pre-programmed response from anomaly detection algorithms embedded in the data pipeline. This possibility, while unconfirmed, has precedent in the agency's protocols for rapid containment of unexpected or potentially hazardous findings. Historically, sudden data restrictions have followed events with clear defense implications or potential for public misinterpretation. During the Cold War, unanticipated satellite signals prompted immediate communication blackouts, only later explained after internal review. In the case of 3i Atlas, the absence of a detailed technical bulletin or incident report left an information vacuum. Researchers and citizen scientists found themselves locked out, unable to access even routine calibration files or observation logs. The administrative curtain fell with little warning, shifting the narrative from the search for answers to the struggle for access itself. Outside the reach of NASA's restricted feeds, telescopes in Chile and Japan continued to track 3 mi atlas 
as it receded from the sun. Teams at Cerro Tololo and Subaru Observatory worked through the data blackout, relying on their own instruments and time on international networks. Their observations, though brief, introduced a new layer of complexity to the case. In the hours after the blackout, Chilean astronomers shared preliminary photometric readings over encrypted research channels. These data hinted at a surface brighter than expected for a typical cometary nucleus. Albedo measurements, an indicator of reflectivity, came in unusually high, with some readings suggesting values more consistent with metallic surfaces than with the dusty ice common to interstellar comets. Such results are rare, and the teams cautioned that calibration errors or stray sunlight could not be ruled out. Still, the numbers stood out, especially when compared to earlier observations from the same telescopes. Japanese orbital analysts, using Subaru's wide-field imaging, reported subtle but measurable deviations in the object's trajectory. Plotting the new coordinates against gravitational models, they found a persistent drift, small but outside the margin of error. This deviation did not match the standard profile of outgassing, which often leaves visible jets or a shifting coma. Instead, the object's path appeared to bend gently, as if nudged by an unseen force. The analysts logged these findings in internal memos, noting the absence of any obvious natural explanation. Infrared readings, collected during the same window, added another puzzle. The object's thermal signature was lower than models predicted for its proximity to the Sun. Normally, a comet at that distance would register a warm surface, heated by solar radiation. Instead, the readings suggested a cooler exterior, closer to that of a shadowed asteroid or even a reflective metallic body. No peer-reviewed paper has confirmed these figures, but the raw numbers circulated quickly among astronomers before the data portals went private. Within days, both Chilean and Japanese repositories shifted to restricted access. The brief window of independent observation closed, leaving only fragments, albedo charts, trajectory plots, and scattered infrared data, shared quietly among researchers. These clues, though incomplete, challenged the standard comet narrative. For a brief moment, the global community glimpsed physical evidence that did not fit established models, raising questions that would soon fuel debate over the true nature of 3i slash Atlas. Analysts across disciplines turned to the available data, weighing every anomaly against the standards of scientific evidence. For most planetary scientists, the first step is to model the forces that could account for the observed deviations, fragmentation, non-uniform outgassing, or rapid rotation. Calculations show that even minor jets of vapor can nudge a comet's path, producing measurable changes that mimic the effects of an external push. In the case of 3i slash Atlas, the absence of visible outgassing complicates the picture, but not enough to rule out natural explanations. Fragmentation models, drawing on previous interstellar objects, suggest that a tumbling nucleus or sudden breakup could explain both the trajectory drift and the unusual reflectivity. The numbers support this. A small fragment, spinning rapidly, would scatter sunlight in ways that could register as metallic in preliminary readings. Yet, the debate does not end with natural models. The SETI community, well-versed in the hunt for technosignatures, applies a higher bar for any claim of artificiality. Their protocols require not just a single anomaly, but a convergence of independent, reproducible evidence. Dr. Sophia Sheik and colleagues emphasize that structured radio signals, surface reflectivity, and motion anomalies must each be verified through multiple instruments and cross-checked against known sources of interference. In their view, extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence, not just unusual data, but a chain of custody and analysis that withstands global scrutiny. Some independent researchers, outside the major agencies, argue that the combination of high reflectivity, non-gravitational acceleration, and the timing of the radio pulse hint at something engineered. They point to protocols developed for identifying techno-signatures, where artificiality is only considered after every plausible natural cause is exhausted. However, no peer-reviewed analysis has yet met that threshold for 3i slash Atlas. The burden of proof remains high, and most in the field caution against leaping to conclusions. 
As the scientific method demands, each new anomaly is tested, modeled, and if necessary, set aside until better data emerges. The debate over 3i slash Atlas is shaped not just by what was observed, but by how the evidence is weighed, and by the discipline of skepticism that guides the search for the truly extraordinary. Several weeks after the initial blackout and radio pulse, a faint signal surfaced on the logs of independent receivers in both the United States and Europe. This time, the pulse was weaker, barely above the noise threshold, and its source appeared to drift slowly along a path just beyond Mars's orbit. The pattern, though fainter, echoed the earlier event. Brief, repeating, and structured at intervals that resisted easy explanation. Some radio technicians documented the pulse in their shift logs, noting that it did not match the signatures of known satellites, background pulsars, or solar emissions. The timing was precise, the intervals regular, yet the data was incomplete, too weak for definitive classification. Requests for the original receiver logs and calibration files began almost immediately. Amateur astronomers and independent analysts filed Freedom of Information Act petitions with NASA and partner agencies, seeking access to raw spectrograms and time-stamped archives from the night of the detection. As of late October, no official response or document release has been recorded. NASA's public repositories, which typically publish routine observation logs, listed only standard calibration entries for those dates. European observatories cited ongoing data review, while private facilities either declined comment or referred inquiries to their national science agencies. The absence of accessible records has sharpened the central mystery. Analysts disagree on the nature of the signal. Some attribute it to rare reflections from solar wind or the echo of a distant transmitter, while others point to the persistent interval spacing as evidence of a structured, possibly artificial source. Without the raw data, each interpretation remains provisional. The Freedom of Information Act requests remain pending, and the relevant logs, if they exist, are still out of public reach. For now, the only certainty is the gap itself, a weak, fleeting signal, followed by silence and a bureaucratic wall. The search for answers has shifted from the sky to the archives, raising new questions about transparency and the fate of unexplained data. In late 2025, NASA restricted access to all raw telescope feeds tracking 3i slash Atlas within hours of the live feed blackout, an action typically reserved for defense or biohazard protocols. Independent observatories in Chile and Japan reported high albedo readings and slight orbital deviations, but no conclusive evidence has since been published in peer-reviewed journals. The original one-minute radio pulse, logged by multiple global networks, was labeled unconfirmed interference and quietly withdrawn from public databases. Weeks later, a similar pattern was detected near Mars's orbit, but official sources have not confirmed any link to 3i slash Atlas. Today, most relevant datasets remain classified or offline, and repeated Freedom of Information Act requests are pending. What happened when 3i slash Atlas vanished remains unverified in the public record. The facts are clear. An interstellar object disappeared, a structured signal was detected, and the subsequent silence has yet to be explained. Until the archives open, the 3i slash Atlas incident stands as a rare case study in both scientific anomaly and institutional secrecy.